In this beautiful room in the House of the Bob in 1844, the Baha'i faith started with the Bob declaring to Mullah Hossein that it was the dawn of a new day in the fortunes of mankind. He was the herald of an even greater figure yet to come. He was the dawn. The one to follow soon after him would be the sun. They were to usher in that wondrous day of God foretold in all the holy scriptures, a time of peace, prosperity, and happiness for all mankind. The room is gone now, the house is gone, the outward body destroyed by the Iranian government, but the inward soul of that much-loved structure lives on today in the hearts of millions of Baha'is all over the world. From the inception of the Baha'i faith, the Baha'is in Iran have been persecuted in the mid-1800s, as many as 20,000 believers were killed either by authorities or by mobs who believed the Baha'i faith to be heretical. In 1933, Baha'i literature was banned and Baha'i marriages were not recognized. In 1955, the National Baha'i Center in Tehran was destroyed by the government. With the establishment of the Islamic Republic in 1979, the persecutions became part of the official government policy. Since then, more than 200 Baha'is have been executed or killed. Hundreds more have been imprisoned and thousands more have been deprived of their jobs, their pensions, their businesses and educational opportunities. The National Spiritual Assembly members of Iran, as well as the local Spiritual Assembly members of Tehran, were executed in January of 1982. In 1983, the Iranian authorities arrested 10 Baha'i women, their crime, teaching children's classes. The youngest of these was a youth of 16 named Muna. These women were given multiple chances to recant their faith and they would be allowed to go free, yet they refused to deny their belief in Baha'u'llah. In one of the final hearings, a judge asked Muna what a 16-year-old could possibly know about faith, and she replied, What more proof do you need than that I was dragged out of school and put in jail, and now for many months have endured all these interrogations for the sake of my religion? What else but my faith could give me the strength and power to stand here in front of you and answer your questions? Although Muna's words and poise astonished the judge, she was executed on June 18, 1983, with nine other women in Shiraz. Protest against the persecutions of the Baha'is of Iran has been international. The European Parliament and several national legislatures have passed resolutions condemning or expressing concern about the Baha'is of Iran. More important, the United Nations Commission on Human Rights and the UN General Assembly have passed numerous resolutions expressing concern over Iran's human rights record. Despite this kind of pressure, evidence continues to emerge that the government has not relented on its goal to destroy the Baha'i community. A secret government memorandum came to light in 1993 aimed at establishing a coordinated policy regarding the Baha'i question. Drafted by the Supreme Revolutionary Cultural Council and signed by the leader of the Islamic Republic of Iran, the document states unequivocally that the progress and development of the Baha'i community shall be blocked. Although the Iranian government has attempted to show compliance in areas like education, Baha'i students applying to colleges are either not accepted based on incomplete applications or once accepted, reasons are found to expel them prior to the term's completion. In early 2004, the government allowed the destruction of two important Baha'i holy places, the gravesite of Kadus, a prominent figure in early Baha'i history, was razed to the ground despite protests from Baha'is at the local, national, and international levels. Later that year, the government destroyed another holy site, the house of Mirza Abbas Nuri, the father of Baha'u'llah. The destruction of this building was made all the more terrible because Mirza Abbas Nuri was widely known as a great 19th century statesman, calligrapher, and literary figure. His house was considered a precious example of Islamic Iranian architecture. Its loss was mourned by more than just the Baha'i world. More recently, 
three Baha'is have been detained by the Ministry of Intelligence in Shiraz since November 19th of 2007 and are now serving a four-year sentence on charges connected entirely with being Baha'i. The charges stemmed from work they were doing with teaching literacy to underprivileged youth on a project approved by the local Islamic Council. The Iranian Baha'is are asking for nothing more than their rights under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, including the right to life, the right to liberty and security of person, and the right to education and work, and the right to profess and practice their religion. It is our hope and prayer that one day soon the steadfast and loving Baha'is in the cradle of the faith can again live and worship in peace.